Over the past 20 years, India has transformed from a regional military power into the fourth most powerful nation in the world, according to the Global Firepower 2025 ranking. Its ability to launch a nuclear strike from land, air, and sea has become a key step in strengthening the country's security and international status. In this overview, we'll explain why this transformation was necessary. In 2005, India's military budget was around $20 billion, which was approximately 25 times smaller than that of the United States and half the size of China's. This gap was primarily due to a weaker economy and the need to allocate a significant portion of resources to combating poverty and to developing education, healthcare, and infrastructure leaving limited funding for defense. The country had one of the largest armies in the world, with about 1.3 million personnel, but its technical equipment lagged behind modern standards. Much of its hardware, tanks, aircraft, air defense systems, and anti-aircraft guns was Soviet-era, inherited from the Cold War, and was becoming obsolete. India's domestic defense production remained underdeveloped, due not only to financial constraints, but also to technological dependence on foreign suppliers. The Indian Navy relied on a single aircraft carrier INS Viroth, acquired from the United Kingdom in 1986, which was already considered both morally and technically outdated to ensure dominance in the Indian Ocean, especially amid the growing influence of China in the region. India's strategy remained largely regional in scope. Unlike the United States, which was engaged in large-scale campaigns in Iraq and Afghanistan, or China, which was actively strengthening its position in the South China Sea, India focused on local challenges. Its primary concern continued to be countering Pakistan and maintaining stability in Kashmir. At the same time, Beijing was already seen as a strategic competitor, particularly in the context of territorial disputes in Arunachal Pradesh, where Chinese claims regularly escalated tensions along the border. In the 2000s, India's nuclear triad was still in its early stages of development. Following the nuclear tests in Pokhran in 1998, the government officially declared itself a nuclear power. However, in practice, its capabilities remained largely theoretical. A key issue was the underdeveloped deployment infrastructure and the low operational readiness of its nuclear forces. While the country possessed nuclear weapons, it lacked effective delivery systems and practical means of deployment. Its nuclear capability was limited to Prithvi ballistic missiles with a range of 150 to 350 kilometers, sufficient to deter Pakistan but ineffective against China, which had far longer-range missiles. The airbase component was also vulnerable. Mirage 2000 fighters, supplied by France in the 1980s, were theoretically capable of carrying nuclear weapons, but they lacked the range and technical specifications necessary for reliably executing strategic missions under adversarial conditions. The naval leg of the triad was virtually non-existent, India had no operational nuclear-powered submarines armed with ballistic missiles. Projects launched back in the 1980s, including the INS Arahant, were delayed not only due to funding shortages but also because of significant technological limitations. By 2010, India's defense spending had nearly doubled to $37 billion. This increase became possible thanks to the rapid growth of the economy, especially in the IT and services sectors. The strengthening of the tax base and the growth of foreign investments allowed more funds to be allocated to defense without compromising other government expenditures. With this funding, strategic forces were strengthened. Ballistic missiles Agni-2, capable of striking central and southern regions of China, as well as almost the entire territory of Pakistan, were put into service. This marked a significant step toward forming a full-fledged nuclear deterrent. The Air Force began receiving Su-30 MKI fighters, the Indian modification of the Russian Su-30, capable of carrying nuclear weapons, which significantly expanded strategic capabilities. In 2009, the nuclear submarine INS Arahant was launched, the first in the national nuclear triad. Its creation marked an important step toward strategic autonomy, but the process of completion and commissioning 
was prolonged due to technical difficulties and significant dependence on Russian technologies. The submarine did not immediately begin full combat duty, but it was from this vessel that the naval component of nuclear deterrence began to take shape. The K-15 Sagraka missiles carried by the submarine, with a range of about 750 kilometers, still had a limited radius and could not cover the entire potentially necessary strike zone. Nevertheless, this was a very significant progress driven by rising regional tensions. In 2009, China intensified patrols in the disputed Arunachal Pradesh region, leading to diplomatic tensions and localized armed clashes on the border. At the same time, Pakistan continued developing Shaheen I missiles, which posed a threat to Indian territory. Despite challenges, the process moved forward at a rapid pace. Beyond military goals, India sought strategic autonomy by actively developing its own defense technologies and reducing dependence on imports of weapons and technology. At the same time, the country pursued international recognition of its status, including ambitions to become a full member of the UN Security Council, which was part of a broader strategy to strengthen its influence on the global stage. By 2015, India's military budget had reached $50 billion, while the United States was spending around $600 billion and China approximately $150 billion. These funds enabled the strengthening of India's nuclear triad. The land-based component was enhanced with the induction of longer-range Agni-3 missiles, capable of striking targets up to 3,000 kilometers away, a significant leap forward. While Agni-2 covered distances of about 2,000 kilometers, mainly targeting Pakistan and the southwestern regions of China, the Agni-3 gave India the ability to hit deep into Chinese territory, including Beijing and Shanghai. The missile featured a larger payload capacity and improved accuracy, marking a critical step in developing a credible long-range deterrence strategy. The Indian Air Force continued to boost its capabilities, increasing the number of Su-30 MKI fighter jets. Additionally, in 2016, India signed a deal with France for 36 Rafale jets. The agreement, the largest defense procurement in a decade, signaled a strategic shift toward modernizing the Air Force. Although deliveries began in 2020, negotiations and preparations had started much earlier. Despite years of delays and technical challenges tied to dependence on Russian technology, the INS Arahant project was completed, and in 2016, the nuclear-powered submarine was officially commissioned. It was armed with K-15 Sagarka ballistic missiles, the first submarine-launched nuclear-capable missiles in India's arsenal. With a range of about 750 kilometers, they could strike targets within Pakistan and southern parts of China. The project's success was made possible by accumulated experience and the gradual mastery of critical military technologies. These advancements were in direct response to growing regional tensions. In 2013, Chinese troops entered the Depsang sector in Ladakh for three weeks, causing a crisis and demonstrating Beijing's readiness for aggressive maneuvers. At the same time, Pakistan continued testing its second-generation Shaheen missiles, heightening the threat along India's western border. The development of the nuclear triad became essential to reliably deter both neighbors. Meanwhile, domestically, India's nuclear program strengthened national pride and showcased technological progress. On the international stage, it served as a tool to advance India's bid to join the nuclear suppliers group and assert its position as a responsible nuclear power. In parallel, India expanded its defense efforts into space. In 2019, under Operation Shakti, the country successfully conducted an anti-satellite weapon test, demonstrating its ability to destroy targets in low Earth orbit. The establishment of the Defense Space Agency marked a systematic approach to military operations in space. Satellite-based navigation through NAVIC, radar imaging via RISIT satellites, and reconnaissance using EMISAT formed the backbone of India's space-based defense architecture. These technologies are not only vital for national security, but also serve as instruments of geopolitical leverage, enabling India to operate independently even amid high-tech conflicts.
By 2020, the country had reached $73 billion in defense spending, marking its highest level at the time. The land-based component of the strategic forces was strengthened with the induction of Igni-4 and Igni-V ballistic missiles, capable of reaching targets up to 5,000 kilometers away, enough to strike across the entire territory of China and Pakistan. Around the same time, the Air Force began receiving French Rafale fighter jets. The first aircraft arrived in the summer amid a sharp escalation with China in the Galwan Valley, which became the most significant border clash between nuclear powers in decades. India's nuclear submarine fleet also reached a new milestone. The INS Arahant, after upgrades, became a fully operational nuclear weapons platform, while its sister vessel, INS Aragat, completed final trials by 2024. Both submarines are equipped with K-4 missiles, with a range of up to 3,500 kilometers, giving India the capability to conduct a retaliatory strike even if its command systems are compromised. In parallel, development began on indigenous multipurpose nuclear-powered submarines under the SSN project, intended for hunting enemy subs, escorting strategic platforms, and operating deep within the Indian Ocean. This shift marked a move from a posture of defensive deterrence to proactive maritime control. At the same time, China accelerated the expansion of its naval infrastructure across the region, from Myanmar to Djibouti. Meanwhile, Pakistan was finalizing deployment of the Shaheen-3 missile, capable of striking targets throughout India. In the face of these challenges, India began to rethink its nuclear triad strategy shifting the focus from range and numbers to stealth, survivability, and system autonomy. The advancement of indigenous technologies under the Make in India initiative reduced dependence on imports and turned the defense industry into an independent tool of geopolitical influence. In 2025, the country raised its military budget to a record $84 billion. The completion of the nuclear triad became one of the key milestones in recent years. Simultaneously, Indian authorities launched a large-scale modernization of the ground forces. The army began receiving new Arjun Mk1A tanks, air defense systems were actively developed, and rearmament efforts continued on a regular basis using advanced drones and UAVs. Significant progress was made particularly in the development of strike and reconnaissance unmanned platforms. India also intensified its international military ties. Through the Quad format and Malabar exercises, it strengthened coordination with the United States, Japan, and Australia, countering China's growing presence in the Indo-Pacific region. It was a long and hard-earned journey toward military self-reliance. Step by step, India strengthened its defense, developed technologies, and asserted its right to a sovereign strategy. Trials delays, external pressure, and internal bureaucracy did not stop the country's progress. Over the course of a quarter century, India managed to build a resilient deterrence system spanning land, air, and sea, placing it alongside the world's leading powers. Now, it possesses everything needed to independently defend its interests and influence the balance of power both in the region and beyond.